Webflow is about to change the game in a way that might make you think twice about learning Framer, Figma sites, Wix or any other platform. They just showed us why they acquired GSAP and the true next level animation tool that they are building with it. This is a huge news for the web development community. For those unfamiliar, GSAP has been the golden standard, the most powerful tool for creating animations for the web so much that almost 80% of the award-winning websites are using GSAP. The problem, well, you needed coding to use it. It's a JavaScript library and requires JavaScript knowledge. But that is about to change because Webflow is making GSAP a no-code tool. They are building a UI and animation engine inside of Webflow with GSAP. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. so. To get started, we have the interactions in the same place, but now it says powered by GSAP. We have this list of triggers, this time with icons, and we also have a brand new trigger, which is a key press. So the first thing I can think of is closing, for example, a mega nav when the user presses escape. We already do this for better accessibility with a few lines of code, but now this will be native. Uh, other things you can do with it, you can play an animation with it. Maybe you can pause an animation with a key press. That would be really cool. But also you could just make something fun on user input. One thing that I really like about this new trigger design is that everything has an icon, which makes it much easier for the user to understand. It's always easier to have an icon to click on uh, rather than, you know, just text because it's just a bit harder to um, to differentiate. Anyway, you click on one of those and then you get these actions. You have custom animations, but also, I guess, pre-made animations. Another very interesting thing here is site actions and brand library actions. I guess these are animations that you can build and then reuse across your website or workspace but also not just animations. Look at this one. This has a code icon, submit form special code. I have no idea what this is doing in the interaction panel, but it kind of also makes sense because yeah, maybe some code with GSAP, not sure. Not sure, GSAP has nothing to do with forms, but whatever. Uh, having like site-wide and brand uh, or like workspace wide actions like code that you can reuse that sounds amazing though it doesn't have to do anything with gsap anyway you choose one of these actions you have a trigger you choose one of the actions and now you see a brand new kind of like a new design here we'll get into more like uh, interesting stuff but this is the simple view in the simple view you see we have this more animation options. This is basically the complexity is hidden. So here we have just duration and ease and then play pause. I'm not sure what, you know, these two buttons do. Next and previous also reverse. Does it reverse the animation, like play it in reverse or make the animation happen in a reverse order? Not sure. Uh, the most interesting one is this 1x button, the speed button. This is, I cannot tell, tell you how useful this is. There has been so many times that I made an animation and because of the, all the details and the complexity in that animation, uh, I wanted to like make sure everything feels right and I had to take my phone and film my screen in slow motion and play it back in slow motion to see all the details in the animation because so many things, you know, happening so fast, I wanted to get every details um, correct. So this, if it goes to, I don't know, like below one, like 0 0.5, that would be awesome. Also, maybe for longer animations, that would also make sense to, to speed it up. Anyway, so that's the simple view. What happens when you click on more animation options then you will see more animation options with this brand new horizontal timeline. So if we go to a few other shots here, we see that uh, you have like multiple animations and you can actually grab these and then drag them on the timeline, just like a video editing software, just like 
after effects in a way. And this is, I cannot tell you like how powerful this is. This is amazing. We have all these controls, uh, but we also have the option to zoom in and out. Why does this matter? I mean, just look at this animation I have here on an actual website. Look at this timeline. Look how long it is and for what? Just for this simple love in action animation. I could have done this with GSAP because I wasn't so comfortable using GSAP. I didn't and I had to do it with Webflow and doing it with Webflow needed me to basically put every single letter in a span and animate everything manually, which will get into this uh, as well. As you see in the next image, we have split text. So all of what I did here manually, I won't have to do it, I assume, anymore uh, in a manual way because now we have split text, uh, which is a, a, a plugin in GSAP. And now it's kind of like included and it can split whatever text you have into lines, into words or letters the way you want. And then we have repeat and some like reverse option and then maybe loop it. The stagger is really nice and I really want to also have easing for the stagger if it makes sense. For example, if you imagine the letters being animated one after another, if there is no stagger, five second animation feels like every like equally divided between all letters and they just, you know, stagger with basically no easing. But I want to have an easing for the stagger. So for example, the letters appear faster at the start, but they get slowed down by the end of it. So that would be really cool to add. I know GSAP has this, but I'm not sure if it's going to be in the UI or not. Anyway, so another cool thing is maybe the coolest, seeing the start and end of each property. So for example, you have opacity going from zero to 100. Makes sense, right? The problem is in the current version, you don't see it in a glance. For example, here, I have to click on opacity and then I see it's 100. Then I see this is the same element that goes to something else, which is 100. But I don't see it unless I click it. Here, you see it in one view, which is really cool. Then we have also animation type. Uh, in GSAP, we have animate from, we also have animate to, so you have the, like different animation types and then properties. It would be really cool to see like all types of like CSS properties being here listed. Obviously the ones that can be animated this way, but right now in Webflow, we can't like easily animate corner radius. I guess like you, there, there are ways, ways to do it, but um, yeah, it would be really cool to have all types of uh, CSS properties here. And, and that's it for here. So next we see the animation library. So basically this is the component window, but for animation. So the way that you make components and you reuse them, now we have it for animations, uh, which is going to be really cool. Now, I want to go back to the first image that I showed you. There is something else in this image that nobody else is talking about that is new. And that is this icon. We have an animation icon on the left panel. And I can just guess maybe this is similar to components where you have animations or interactions because animations and interactions, uh, we use them in the industry like interchangeably, but they are they don't mean literally the same thing actually. So maybe this is for interactions, some stuff maybe even with code, the code component that we saw, and things that you can reuse on the uh, on the websites throughout the project. That would be really cool. I still don't know like any complex use cases for this except for for example a nice animation that you can add to text. So maybe a marketer could use the same animation and just drag and maybe drop it on an, a, a text and then that text gets animated. All right, now let's talk about a few things that we do not see in these screenshots that are equally, if not more important. For the start, 
I don't see any ways of creating stagger effects for children. For example, here we have a good one. We have a parent and then we have four images. I want a way to be able to click on the project wrapper and on the parent essentially, and then animate all children or all the siblings within that parent. I don't see a way to do this like visually in Webflow and I would love to have this option without the need to animate these elements individually. That's not what I mean. What I mean is to animate them automatically with the stagger I want, but without having to animate them individually. This is super important. For example, if you have CMS items and you want to animate them uh, with a certain effect, that would be really cool to see, but that's not all we have like other important things that I don't see here. For example, uh, I would love to be able to add some sort of logic. For example, if this animation uh, happens, then make that animation happen. Things like that could happen in a sequence or based on like user interaction, do some sort of logic. The ability to pause an animation and potentially reverse it, that would be awesome to see. Uh, I don't know if they are being they they will be able to do this in a UI or not. That would be really cool to see. And there are actually a lot of other things that GSAP does that they could add. For example, now we are on the GSAP website. We see that they have this like core part, uh, what GSAP does. So all the timeline, all the like the basic animations that you expect and you know, but there are actually more animation. So there is obviously scroll as well, but there is also SVG. So with the SVG animations, you can animate an SVG, you can morph an SVG, you could like morph two SVGs to one another. You could like have them uh, have like an element to follow a certain path. You can all do all of these already with GSAP. I don't know how it would be in a UI, honestly but that would be really cool to see. Uh, I'm not like expecting all of these to come out and uh, Webflow even themselves, they they said that they are going to roll out more and more uh, animation of like functionalities with time, but to start, they showed us what they showed us. Uh, there is inertia, for example, as you see, if I move this very slowly, uh, like the the element above it moves also slowly slowly but if i move it fast the element kind of like has a gravity to it um it's inertia there are yeah like quite a lot of like really really cool also ui stuff for example here uh, we can do things like animate an element between two different positions i'm not sure like i don't see this anywhere here um but this this would be really cool or things like this for example no matter where i bring this element to the final basically animations it happens in this uh, position so the origin um, position doesn't change the end position if if it makes sense or things like this so there are a lot of like really cool stuff like even with randomizer that you can do with GSAP that I also don't see here. Randomizer would be actually really cool to randomize text or randomize position, things like this, to give it like two, um, maybe um, two inputs and then uh, like two numbers and then randomize between these two. Things like this would be really cool, but I guess uh, only time uh, can tell. And the last thing that I almost forgot to mention is Probably it's not gonna come and I'm not sure even if it's possible, but something like a state machine, like what Rive has. So in Rive, you have different timelines, different animations essentially, and then there's a state machine. And with the state machine, you can animate these timelines into one another. So one animation is playing in a timeline in a loop, and then you say on the click of a button, change that to whatever other timeline and it the state machine automatically takes care of it kind of in a way uh like this 
animate between two positions in a this is like a simple way this is not state machine but you know it automatically takes care of the animation between like two different states uh, something like this would be like amazing but even for the start even if we just look at what webflow showed us just this timeline uh, having like animation forms adding properties text having maybe like different targets that you can play with here this is like truly game changing at the end if there is one takeaway for you i want you to think of the amount of control that you can have with this tool and this is the main differentiation point between this and framer wix figma sites anything else those other tools they give you animations in a much simpler form uh, but also with much less control and i think webflow again is hitting this like sweet spot of not being too complex but being actually like truly powerful uh, just to give you an example like mouse like custom cursor all of these tools other tools they give you a custom cursor animation it's a pre-made animation in webflow there is no custom cursor animation it's just that you know where the cursor is and you can hide the cursor like the actual cursor and then put one or multiple elements where the cursor is with different easing like each element with different easing in fact you can do multiple things with that interaction you don't do just custom cursor with it you can do custom cursor alongside with other things that's what makes Webflow really powerful. And I think, again, they are hitting this sweet spot of not being too complex, but being like actually really powerful. All right, so this was it. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you are as excited as I am about the future of Webflow and GSAP and web animations in general. Uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think about all of this? What is you are really excited about? Will you try to learn this, use this, or are you better off with simpler animation tools? Um, nonetheless, I will have videos on this. Until the next one, thank you for watching and peace out.